the Cleveland Browns, another surprise team in the NFL, doing a lot better than the Raiders, up by one game. Four and one is the record so far. Lost week one against the Baltimore Ravens, only scored six points on offense, and I don't know what happened since then. Something clicked, something happened, but they just turned it around at that point, winning four straight games, beating the likes of Indianapolis this past week, beating the likes of Washington, beating uh, all these teams and and being 4-0, the Cowboys having that good Odell Beckham Jr. game, and now they're 4-1. Baker Mayfield is efficient, not having the best statistical season that still belongs to his rookie season, but he is efficient, and he is getting it done. Nine passing touchdowns to four interceptions in five games on pa- on pace for 3,100 yards passing. Not that good, but there's no need to pass it. There really isn't when you can get it done with your run game. That run game is solid. Okay, we know that Nick Chubb just got hurt in that, de- that game against the Dallas Cowboys, but even without Nick Chubb, that run game is still good. D- Ernest Johnson stepped it up to be that RB2. Had that one big game against the Dallas Cowboys, and then last week against the Indianapolis Colts had that big 32-yard run, I believe it was, for the Browns. Then we all know about Kareem Hunt. We all know how good this guy is. We all know that he should have been an NFL starter for another team if he was given the opportunity. He's capable of being a three-down back. He proved it in Kansas City, and now he's proving it with the Cleveland Browns. He has a prove-it contract. He signed a prove-it contract with his hometown team, the Cleveland Browns, in 2019. And again, the best decision that the Browns could have made was to sign him again to a, to a, uh, not a lot of money, but a prove-it contract for Kareem Hunt yet again. So the value that you're getting out of Hunt for the amount of money that you paid is well worth it. Chubb is going to be back in about four weeks or so And I am excited to see how that run game is going to operate even more so with Chubb and Hunt in the lineup. Okay, we saw how great they were uh, against the Cincinnati Bengals in that one primetime game this year. And that run game is just going to be the bread and butter, the lifeline of that Cleveland Browns offense. Their defense still needs a little bit of work. They have playmakers, though, which is good. Miles Garrett, six sacks in the NFL so far through five games. This game against the uh, Pittsburgh Steelers is going to be his biggest test because that offensive line is pretty good. But maybe he'll get some sacks and maybe he'll get a helmet toss or a helmet throw uh, mixed in there as well. So we know how good Miles Garrett can be against on the defensive line. Denzel Ward, even though that secondary gets a lot of crap, gets a lot of hate because they have given up a lot of points and quarterbacks seem to have a lot of success against that secondary. Denzel Ward has been a bright spot for that Cleveland Browns secondary. He's given up some big players, uh, some big plays here and there, but when the game has been on the line, he shows up and he does his job. When this team in the secondary were to get Greedy Williams back because he's been injured since the offseason, he was recently placed on IR. We don't know whether he's going to be gone for the long run or whether it's just going to be a short-term three-week IR and he's going to be activated in three weeks. Uh, it's an injury. It's a nerve in the shoulder, so he's not going to have to require any sur- uh, sort of sh- a surgery for that, but... When Greedy Williams gets back, when Denzel Ward is in the, in, in the mix as well, so they're lining up opposite of each other, I'm excited for that Cleveland Browns uh, secondary and seeing how improved that defense can be because we already know how efficient that offense is. It's just time for the defense to step it up. The head coach, Kevin Stefanski, he was criticized for that hire. I don't know why. I mean, he, I, I guess because there was really no substance to him. He wasn't like a, a big splash hire. He was just... More so a guy, hey, I interviewed for the job and Cleveland Browns ended up liking him, so they end up hiring him. But he he has done a good job. Okay, we, we were kind of critical in the, that first game against the Baltimore Ravens, but ever since, going 4-0, turning it around, he's done his job. He's listened to his players. He's, he's done what Adam Gase cannot do, and that's listen to his players when they have a concern. Odell Beckham talked about, hey, get me involved early. If you get me involved early, everything is going to be fine. I promise you that. What do they do? They turn around. They get him involved early in in that second week against the Cincinnati Bengals. He goes on to have four receptions in that game and a touchdown. What would have been two touchdowns in that game. So he's listening to his players and he's becoming more and more of a player's coach. And that's what the Browns really like to have as a player's coach in that locker room. So good, good hire, good coach, good team. Do they win the division? Absolutely not. I'm just going to say how it is. I don't think they're going to win the division. 
that Baltimore Ravens team, yeah, Lamar Jackson and that offense has not been looking as good as last season, but they're still pretty freaking good. The Pittsburgh Steelers have been looking great as well. And both of them, the Steelers and the Ravens, one of them is going to win the division. The Browns, there's just no room for them. But can they wait? Can they make a wild card spot? Yeah, absolutely. This is the first time that they've been in contention to make a wild card spot. The closest I feel like that they've been in contention to make a spot since 2007. If you remember the years with Derek Anderson and how he just had this phenomenal season for the Cleveland Browns when Brady Quinn got drafted, Anderson took the hold. On the, on the starting job, made a Pro Bowl appearance that year, and he led the Cleveland Browns to a 10-6 and six record. Now, they didn't make the playoffs because it was a Sunday night game where the Colts had to beat the Tennessee Titans, and if the Colts beat the Titans and the Browns would have made the playoffs, the Titans and the Colts, they were just, I believe the Colts were down just by one score, and they needed the ball back, and they had all three timeouts, and it was the two-minute warning, but the Titans continued to run the ball, and instead of the Colts and Tony Dungy using his timeouts to get the ball back, because they were already 13-3 at that point. They already had the number one seed, so they didn't need to play for anything. Instead of using his, his timeouts to get the ball back and potentially help the Colts pick up a victory in that game against the Titans, they just let it let it go and let the clock run out, didn't use their timeouts. A lot of Cleveland Browns fans were mad at that, were mad at Tony Dungy and the Colts, because you just cost us a playoff spot. You could have helped us get into the, the playoffs, but instead the Titans did when they got that victory. But instead, this is the closest that they've been uh, to a playoff spot since that 2007 season. So the Browns, I'm liking what they're doing with that Cleveland team.